Is this a snake? It is a snake. It's a cotton, right? Yeah, it's a big cotton. A <laughs> <laughs> guy just biked right past this thing. Nice. We saw him from way far away. How's it going, dude? It's what you like to see. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and happy March. It is uh, getting to be the middle of the month now, and we've got a lot of plans coming up for traveling, so we're going to try to take full advantage of this last week we have here in Georgia for a while and uh, just hit it hard every day. But today we're going to a region of the state we haven't visited yet this year, and hopefully we'll find some snakes, and worst case, maybe some salamanders. So let's go flip a little bit of tin and maybe a few rocks. <laughs> what? A green salamander behind bark? That's nuts. Pine bark. All right, we put this guy's bark back, but that is crazy. I've never peeled a green salamander under bark. I know that the Western Anites, this is one of the main ways people find them, but green salamander, we put this piece back too. So habitat restored, but there we go. First good find of the day. Well, that's certainly the weirdest thing we're gonna see today. I, uh, I really just, we're not in green salamander habitat whatsoever. We're at the very fringe of their range. But yeah, we're just in kind of a forest. There is a little bit of rock, but it's not green salamander rock. It's shale. But these guys like limestone and sandstone. They're very odd. Beautiful salamander, though. We'll let him crawl back under his bark. First green salamander of the year. Here in a place where they're, I was just completely not expecting it. All right, bud. Here you go. Here's your bark. I have not yet found a tiger salamander under bark. That's up next, I think. <laughs> right here. Oh, milk! Oh. <laughs> wow, I wonder if that's... He looks right to be... Is that him? I don't know. That's so cool. <laughs> well, there we go. As flipped, first milk snake of the year. Second snake of the day. Just looking at it, I don't think it's the same one. It's got the same colors, but his pattern looks different. Yeah, Man, let's see. Spot, Dang, he's cold. cold. Well, if the green salamander didn't make the day, that definitely does. First of year eastern milk snake, first Georgia milk snake of the year. Surely the first of many milk snakes. I don't know how many of them are going to be in Georgia, but... We've definitely got milk snake plans this year, as always. One of my favorite snakes to target. And obviously, this one is a pretty good start. Beautiful. Kind of maroonish red. Not super vibrant, but also not dull or ugly. Very pretty snake. I love those lip bars, too. Look at that. Maybe we'll put them on the back side here. There you go. Yeah, he's, he's got a spot right here. There he goes. It's a good rock. Look at that, milk snake number two. Beautiful. That's sick. <laughs> Can I grab him? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah. Serious. That thing is so pretty. Yeah, it is gorgeous. It looks so he similar too, though. I yeah. I can tell that one. He's so similar to that other one. Yeah, he's just a little bigger and. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Well, this twitchy little dude is definitely gonna make for a beautiful milk snake number two. Very similar to the first one we found. Maybe a little bit prettier, a little bit redder gorgeous snake though and as you can see Richard just flicked that tiny little piece of uh, rock off the top and he was basically basking right there really cool all right here's a little video of this guy in hand before we put him back in his little pile very very pretty we have been pretty lucky today with two freshly shed milks and a, uh, a very nice green salamander so far you ready for me to let him go all right dude here's your here's your rock pile I put this stuff on top of this to put up. Oh, corn! What? 
This rock's barely even flippable. I was gonna move it and put it over there and there's a corn under it. It's flipping crazy out here. Look at that. Beautiful. So cool. Well, that is ridiculously cool. Corn and two milks, this one little tiny spot that I've never really had much luck at until Richard started finding snakes here. And now apparently there's snakes here every time. <laughs> Beautiful little corn snake though. I was hoping we'd see one of those today. This one looks flippable actually. Make sure there's no rattlesnakes right here. It's not flippable. Oh, corn, another one. Oh no, this is a milk. Basking. <laughs> Bass. Yeah. What? <laughs> I went to flip that rock and he was Where just was bass. He? he was right here, like right there in those leaves. I went because I was going to flip, I was going to try to flip this, which actually does look really good. It's just bask in milk day. There is milk snake number three that I thought was a corn. It was basking. <laughs> Two basking milks, basically. Um, I guess they were kind of tucked under leaves, but definitely not completely under a rock and not fully exposed either. And here's the little corn one more time. I'll show you these guys side by side so you can kind of see the differences between corns and milks if you're not a herper or someone who's super familiar with snakes. They do get confused a lot. Um, and I can see why. You saw me call that other milk a corn when I first saw him through the grass, because if you if you cover their head, they do have pretty similar patterning. But really, the easiest way to tell what you're looking at is the head. Corn snakes have that kind of characteristic V shape right there. And milk snakes aren't gonna have that. And then corn snakes have the rat snake head with the, uh, the black bars on the white lip, whereas milk snakes have more of a, a king snake head. Get a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison without the milk snake trying to eat the corn. Because I'm pretty sure that is something he would do. More of a rounded head when you look at it, especially from the top down. You can see the corn, and this is a juvenile corn, so adult corns are going to get a lot bigger than adult milks as well. As you can see, the V-shape on, on this milk snake's head kind of stops behind the eyeball, whereas with the corn it goes all the way to the front of the head. Once again, lots of nuanced pattern differences. They both kind of have a checkerboarded belly. You can see the uh, checkered boarding on both of their bellies. Ooh, double tantilla. Two of them. Yeah. That's a good rock. All right, well, it's been a solid day, and now we have a Tantilla double flip. Not as many fossorials today. Lots of quality and not much quantity so far. But maybe we'll start getting into some snakes on this hillside. A worm snake. Very pretty. All right, there's our next worm snake of the day. Very big and healthy. Look at those beady little eyeballs. Love to see them. Just uh, let him go. That pink belly. Hey, there's our first queen snake of the new year. I think. Very nice. We were just talking about how good these rocks look. Hey, he's, he's being a bro. <laughs> All right, I guess we're just gonna leave this guy right here since he's just chilling, but very nice. First queen snake of the year. And actually, I think this is the first queen snake I've seen in this area. Hey, this is a nice salamander. It's our first long-tailed salamander of the year and a beautiful one at that. Look at that guy. He is gorgeous. Good morning, everybody, from the swamps of Metro Atlanta. Yesterday was fantastic. However, the numbers weren't really all that crazy. We didn't see too much in the way of common snakes. We did have a couple of really good finds and our first queen snake of the year, but today we're gonna to be completely spending the day in the swamp. It's supposed to actually get pretty hot today, so I don't have super high expectations for target species, but I am hoping that we can at least find some good numbers today. So. Let's get into it. There has been a lot of flooding here recently, so I'm not sure what the state of this place is gonna be. It doesn't look great as of now, but we'll see how that affects the snakes. A ring neck. It's the first one of those under this set. 
I got him. Come here. Holy fire ants. All right. Well, there we go. First snake of the day. This guy's giving us a little bit of the tail curling. I don't see that terribly often. There's our first Nerodia of the day. Little guy sitting in the leaves right here. Little Midland. And the green tree frogs this year are everything but green. This one's blue, kind of turquoise looking. Not super vibrant, but very cool looking. I think this guy was probably a victim of the great flood that evicted him from where he was spending the winter. He was just chilling on this branch right here, so we'll see if he wants to go back. You wanna to return to your branch, brother? Go on. I know, my hand's nice, but the branch is better. There you go. <laughs> this is kind of neat. It's the first time I've ever seen snakes at this spot, and we've got two brown water snakes. They're definitely too far away to get our hands on, but nice to see these guys at a new spot, or at least basking in a new spot. I've seen them here before, just not in this little area. All right, I walked over to this culvert and spotted this guy swimming in the water, foraging for tadpoles. This is a very, very young plain-bellied water snake. On the surface, he kind of looks like a, a midland, but you flip him over, no significant pattern on the belly, but he is not enjoying being handled, so I'm just gonna put him back right here. Oh, he didn't do anything fun, he just buried. Oh, there he goes. That's what I saw, I just saw him zipping around in here. Is this a snake? It is a snake. It's a cotton, right? Yeah, it's a big cotton. <laughs> <laughs> guy just biked right past this thing. Nice. We saw him from way far away. How's it going, dude? That's what you like to see. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right, well, we got a guy approaching, so we're going to move him out of the trail. But first cotton of the day. All right, well, we just ran into a runner who wanted to see this guy and talk about snakes a little bit, but first cotton of the day, crossing the path. Kind of unexpected, but it is unseasonably warm today. See, anytime someone goes by, he gives them a little, little gape. <laughs> but he was actually crossing the other direction, so we're going to give him one of these. Come on. Um, do you want to be cooperative? There we go. Nope, he doesn't. There you go. Yep, go that way. <laughs> the tail wagging. Go on. Yes, that's the direction you were going. Go. Scoot. Yep. Nope. Yeah, there you go. Off to the swamp. That way. Nope. No. No more beefing. We've had our beef. I want to make sure you get far away from this path. Oh, and you do too, you just don't know yet. Keep moving. Walking dog. There you go. All right, double ring neck flip. I was just wondering if it was a little too hot to flip these rocks today, but I guess not. Very nice. Here's another ring neck. This one's actually got a disconnected ring. It's kind of odd for around here. Well, the ring necks just keep coming. There has been no shortage of these lately. This one's also got a split ring. Oh, what are you doing? What is happening? What? <laughs> All right, guys, we're onto our next spot. The, uh, the first stop of the day was very snaky. Just didn't feel like it because none of the snakes we were seeing are necessarily what we were looking for, but we did actually find all of the local Nerodia species at that spot. I just now realized that. And we found a lot of the aquatics. I think the only aquatic species that we could find here that we're missing are queen snake and mud snake. And one of those is not gonna be happening. All right, guys, well, I'm standing here in these rocks, screwing around on my phone and Caitlin walks up. Right next to me is a king. We're gonna have to grab him. Whoa. All right, well, I was standing there looking at the king and I noticed this guy I went down to catch him and found this guy. We got a nice little uh, herp party here. Eastern King, Grumpy Brown Water. 
And I think that's our first loggerhead of the year. Very nice. Nice triple. All right, first loggerhead of the year. Back to the creek. I'll let the brown water snake go. But uh, this is what we really want to look at. <laughs> Gorgeous king snake. In an area where they are not very easy to find. Why are you balling up on me like this? I just want to show the people how pretty you are. Flip back over. There you go. I know you're not dead. But yeah, we've got, between all the chaos there where we had the uh, Nerodia and the turtle pop up, the snake has started getting a little bit defensive, but you can see gorgeous female king snake here at a spot where I have only ever seen one before, and it's possible it was this snake, but it was deep in shed when I found it, so. Either way, good to see that a female king snake is hanging out right here in such an urban area. I mean, we're under a bridge for a major road right now, so. Really, really cool to just see any kind of king snakes hanging on in this kind of microhabitat, but extra cool to see an adult female that looks to be very healthy and ready to breed, so. She doesn't want to show us her face, but there it is. Very, very pretty snake. Maybe we'll get a better look at her as she goes back into the rocks. I'm going to let her go here in a second. All right see where she goes you were over there go on go that way yep there you go that's the right idea hopefully we'll get to see her crawl into the sun here in a second go the other way down go down she's gonna crawl up into a ball again Ugh, so annoying. Here you go. I'll just put her in the rocks. There you go. Awesome. What a way to end the day. Oh, she's coming back. Wait, do you not have any clue where you are? We found you right here. There she goes. We cruised the snake. It's nothing crazy, but come here, dude. A ring neck, alive on the road in March. Very, very weird. You know, it's not, not a mole king or a corn like I was hoping for, but I mean, hey, cruising snakes at night in March. Can't complain about it. Look at that. All right, we'll take this pretty little dude and just kind of put him over here well off the road. Here you go, bud. And maybe we'll do another pass or two. What are you doing? You just gonna bury in the leaves right here? This guy's got a really reduced pattern on his belly. Kind of neat looking. All right, everyone. Well, that has been a heck of a day. We saw a lot of really cool stuff today, and we saw a lot of cool stuff yesterday, too. We're kind of moving from uh, what I would call early spring into prime spring. Um, we're gonna have tree frogs and stuff calling here soon, and Snakes are pretty much everywhere. We just have to uh, decide what to do every day and make the best of spring while it's here. But yeah, we can expect a lot of good stuff moving forward, hopefully. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. Only the one ring neck tonight, but hey, it's a start. It's mid-March, so uh, normally road cruising, we don't expect to see anything until April or even May sometimes. So I'll take it, gonna call it a day here and wrap this episode up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying our early spring window. It's been fantastic so far, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>